Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So anybody that follows us a lot will know that I haven't done a podcast in quite some time. Um, and to be honest with you guys, I, I don't know if I'm going to continue doing the podcast. I'm just not getting enough um, interest, enough feedback, enough views, so on and so forth. So I'm not sure if I'm going to continue these. I may, I may not. <clears throat> You know, it might just be one of those things where if and when I choose to do one, I'll do one. So um, if you'd like us to continue, I'd really appreciate some feedback, maybe some suggestions on um, podcasts, uh, what I should talk about and such. So <clears throat> what have I been up to? Um, probably since the last time I spoke on this video uh, or on the podcast, rather, um, I think I've released two videos. So the two videos I released were um, one where I was cutting a sliding dovetail, which was a hidden sliding dovetail. Um, it's probably not the best, um, the best shot. Um, there was there wasn't a great deal of close-ups, but the premise is there. It's you know it's it's a really simple thing. Um, you know, there was no, there was. I didn't use a, um, a dovetail plane, anything like that. It was um, just um, some Japanese saws, um, and I also did do a review on some Japanese saws that were very kindly sent to me by Workshop Heaven. Um, so, if you want to go and check those videos out, there'll be a link in there somewhere in the description. There, you know, there's links all over the place to my YouTube channel. Um, <clears throat> I was actually building a chair in this chair. <laughs> this chair has been ongoing for um, quite some time now, which is, it's nothing unusual for me, uh, you know, for it to, to, to be dragging out. Um, obviously, same again, it's not unusual for me to be doing things in between, which is very usual. Um, so I did actually s start um, the outhouse roof. So, um, for anyone that follows us on um, Instagram, you'll normally see quite a lot of um, posts of us where, or reels rather, when I'm in my back garden. So you've probably noticed a bit of an outhouse, um, you know, wind, obviously windows in it. Um, so up until last week, it was a flat roof. Um, and in the northeast of England, I think I think in England in general, we've had like a really really strange um, summer. Um, I haven't had a great deal of sunshine, um, and there's been a lot of rain, <laughs> a lot a lot of rain. Um, and I think it was I can't remember what it was. It might have been like uh, last month for um, two three weeks ago, and um, it was absolutely torrential rain. It was really really bad. Um, and me outhouse started leaking and um, so there was there was water actually coming through the the light socket fixture it was like a literally a waterfall coming through there so it was really really bad i had to isolate the power um, and because because the light the lights here in the uk run on a loop after it's probably the same in the in the states and other places because they run on a loop um, I had to isolate the downstairs um, lights, which meant I was sitting in the dark. <laughs> wasn't fun. Um, so that really, really needed to be done. Um, some of the wood was rotten underneath as well, so it wasn't in good shape. It wasn't in good shape. So basically, um, I put some framework up. Um, I can't even remember the, the the slope of the roof now. What what I've what I've done. But uh, I'll I'll put it I'll put a picture up. There's a there'll be like a picture. I um, I put shingles on. I put some um, I put some material uh, some sheet material on OBS, and then I put shingles. Um, sorry, uh, felt on that layer, um, and then shingles on top of it. Ironically, um, I'm half a pack of shingles sh uh, short because <laughs> I didn't uh, calculate it probably, and I didn't calculate for the um, for the starting row and for the finishing row. But hey ho. Um, so I've been pretty much busy with that. So, um, it, it was an experience <laughs> kind of thing. It's pretty much all done, barring barring half a pack of shingles. Um, I do actually need to put the fascia 
Um, I'm just going to put P uh, uh, UPVC fascia and soffits um, and that's oh, obviously the gut are in um, and that's it done but uh, hopefully that should that should solve me um, leakage um, no more waterfall through me light fixture just before I started all this um, I started kind of messing around with this guy um, so this is this is a Kana um, Japanese plane for those of you that don't know um, I bought this from Workshop Heaven I can't even remember when I bought it from Workshop Heaven quite some time ago um, and it's it literally sat in my shed unused for maybe a year and a half maybe even longer which is it's a crying shame um, I got it out a few times um, and I didn't do well with it to be honest you know um, I I straightened out the bed um, you know don't uh, prepared the sole of the plane you know the usual stuff um, and I just wasn't I just wasn't getting good results with it um, the blade never quite felt sh like you know sharp as what well. I can get me western style planes or chisels um, I was just never really happy never consistent with it um, and me being me kind of when something doesn't work I tend to put it away and leave it and I shouldn't do that I should persevere a bit more because normally in the end I do get I do get round to figuring out or or get the answers from somewhere of what's what's happening sort of thing so I did actually start following a guy on um, Instagram. This is a Japanese um, craftsperson, and I think he, he 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 goes around and he you know he repairs um, you know the likes of temples and you know like old like really old um, Japanese style um, buildings with all the traditional joints and whatnot. So one of his YouTube videos, um, it, it is in Jap uh, Japanese. But there is subtitles which ironically I do actually struggle to to read the subtitles and take in you know the information the visual information as well I don't know must be a bit of a I don't know cross wire in my brain I, I struggle to do things like I don't know why but anyway after watching it and watching it and watching it and watching it and um, kind of screwing around with this um, I did actually post um, a couple of videos of me using this um, which actually I thought was quite ironic because there was actually a couple of people who were saying it would be good if you actually showed showed the um, you know the the type of shavings I was getting out of it and I was actually getting really good shavings out of it but what I think what what people didn't appreciate was that I was using it at speed um, again, same again if, if you watched any of my videos when I'm using a western style plane I use it at speed I don't just like slow 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 it, it, you know if you go back like 100 years that's not the way not designed to be like slow 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 everything was to do with um, getting a piece of furniture out as quickly as possible um, you know before before machines were invented and such um, you know I think don't quote us on this but I think the smaller pieces of furniture like you know small tables and stuff like that it was expected for one of those to be done in a day um you know which makes a lot of sense um obviously you know rush 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 uh, people want furniture and there isn't the machines to build them at that time so i was kind of using um this canner in the same sort of fashion you know like with 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 a little bit of speed um to be honest i haven't got a great deal of um experience with these sorts of planes i have got a little bit but not a great deal um but i was still able to pick up some speed with it um and you know i think you know 100 years ago that's probably how they were used they wouldn't you know they wouldn't i think people forget um when they say a lot of these japanese craftsperson you know the, uh, you know the, a lot of them are at shows or they're in the workshop demonstrating um at how sharp the 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 blade is and how well tuned the canner is or the or the die itself um, the, the the body um you know in reality nobody's nobody's gonna you know be slow 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 when they're producing furniture it's just not going to happen you know so i think i think a lot of people forget this 
um, which I thought was quite funny and quite ironic. So what what I want to do today is kind of just like talk through um, a few things what I've picked up from from the Japanese um, guy that I was watching. I will leave a link um, to his YouTube channel. Most of it is in Japanese. Um, well, obviously all of it is in Japanese, but some of the videos are subtitled in English. Um, he's, he's, he's very, very thankfully for me, he's, he's went to the trouble and he has, um, you know, put English subtitles up, which is absolutely great. I'm very thankful for that. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through a few things um, and hopefully this will help um, some people, hopefully it won't. Um, and a disclaimer here, I ain't no experts with, um, with a canner. Um, I've got a lot of experience with Japanese swords, a lot, a lot. So I've got a lot, of, a lot of information and experience in my head. But with these, you know, not, not so much. But I have been getting good results and I, and I thought I'd share it. I'm just going to go through a few things. Some of these things you may know, some of the things you may not know. So I apologise for the people that I do know. So upon getting this, um, one of the first things I've done was to flatten the, the sole. So I did actually mess this up. <laughs> Um, and one of the things you've got to take into consideration when you are flattening the, the sole, um, obviously use a known flat surface. I personally used a small piece of um, worktop um, bench, kitchen bench, which was laminated. It's nice and flat. I know it's flat. And I just basically glued some um, sandpaper onto it um, and bang on, flat enough did the job so when you are doing this which i didn't do the first time when you backwards and forwards backwards and forwards make sure you're actually turning the die around and you're not just you're not just holding it one way you're actually you know so you've got the you've got the back of the plane pointing towards you do a few strokes and then turn it around so the back of the die is away from you um, this just helps to keep things like level so you're not putting too much pressure on the front you know creating a, a bit of a tape add to the sole obviously you don't want to be doing that um, so I actually did <laughs> when I first when I first got the plane but thankfully obviously I didn't do too much damage um, and I know not to do that now and I basically sorted it out so after after flattening it um i do actually or people do they'll draw a little line maybe i don't know maybe 10 centimeters 15 centimeters something like that at the front at the back and in front of the blade some i've seen some people do it at the back of the blade as well i did actually do the front and back of the blade but i have been seeing people typically do it in front of the blade so when you do that, is what is what happens is you actually create a bit of a um, concave, um, and this is tra traditionally this is done with a, um, like a kind of a like a scraping plane, a Japanese scraping plane. Obviously, I don't have a Japanese scraping plane, so how I achieved this, I just used a card scraper. Um, you know, just use a card scraper and then um, check it, check it with a ruler, see how much see how much of a belly you've got on it um, and once that was done I actually rounded um, the the bottom of the plane off all, all the corners and obviously the top as well and this is ironic this this is another this is another kind of case of um, same sort of thing that happened with the Japanese swords when I started messing around with them um, don't do this don't do that you can't do this and you shouldn't do that and the same sort of thing with this, it was like, you know, you touch the bottom of the plane and don't touch nothing else. And I remember saying this, I can't remember the guy that said it, like, don't touch anything else, you know, and whatever. And and I kind of had it and they were all sharp corners and I thought, that can't be right, that, you know. And I'm, and I'm you know, I'm not watching, I think it was a video, it must have been a video I was watching. And I remember seeing all the sharp edges on his and I said, and I was thinking to myself, that can't be 
that can't be comfortable. <laughs> um, you know, sh surely to God you should, you know, you should round some of the corners off or even sand it a little bit, you know, to make it a bit better. Um, anyway, fast forward till I've seen um, the video of the guy that I've um, been talking about. He rounds all the corners off and the very far um, corners um, behind the blade, um, he actually takes it. He actually takes a chisel straight down um, and rounds them um, off. I haven't been too severe there. Um, his look quite severe, but he's done that for comfort. Um, you know, and he, he basically states as an individual, you know, kind of do it. Um, so, to a degree, I did, um, but I do find these comfortable. Um, you know, so, some people um, might not find them comfortable, but some people leave them square, and it's just like it's really you know you don't need to leave them square make make the die comfortable for yourself make the, the body of the plane comfortable to handle so you know there's no sharp edges anywhere on this um guy here very very comfortable um you know and it's it's just ironic when you think about it um you know some some guy probably on youtube it probably was you know telling you not not to touch it and the cut the logic and common sense in my head was saying well that's stupid why don't you just round it over what difference is it going to make but i said to myself this guy's got more experience than me so let's not <laughs> let's not jump the gun but obviously i come across this video and sorted so what's next um next up would be Next up would be the the bed. Um, so I've screwed this up <laughs> a, a, a good couple of times. Um, also, also the fact that I've have to, I had to flatten this a couple of times, um, which obviously takes its toll and it takes the wood down. Um, so I did initially fix this with some veneer um, the first time I took it down too far and obviously the blade was protruding a bit too much for my liking so um, i basically had to add some um, newspaper so i think traditionally the way the japanese do it is they take a they take a shaving quite a quite a thick shaving um, and basically the guy that i've seen do it um quite an old guy he he basically just it looked like he was using prick stick as far as I'm aware, um, prick stick, he, he cut the piece to size, prick stick, put it in, put the blade in and, j and let it dry. Um, and obviously that's that's going to sort that out. Um, I haven't done that. I've just used regular paper um, and <laughs> it worked. It worked. It's not the best, but, you know, it, it does the job sort of thing. So for the people that don't know and are wondering why I have put paper in this, it's basically you probably can't see on the on the video, but how these how these blades fit in, um, it's kind of just a wedge system. So you know, there's um, there's a wedge there's a wet there's a wedge section cuts like a wedge notch if you like and um, that's cut that matches um the angle of the blade the same again i don't know if you can see that on the video but the the actual blade itself is tapered so kind of the the way the way people actually flatten the back of um of the bed i'm jumping ahead of myself here so how they do that is to basically get a pencil, draw a load of pencil all over the all over the back of the uh, the blade, and then they'll put it in, you know, and give it a, give it a bit of a shove. Um, and as they're wiggling it out, um, the the lead off the pencil um, will, will kind of leave a like a bruise or a graze, if you will. And basically, you just you get a chisel and you and you start removing that you keep on going you keep on going you keep on going and then basically you should have like a, a bed that's covered in um, lead so that's kind of how you do that it is a bit tedious to do um 
admittedly this isn't the best um i didn't spend enough time doing it um it was getting on my nerves a bit <laughs> but um it is which which way is it yeah um i think me looking at it it's on the left side it's a bit um there's a, a slightly a bit too much taken off so when i when i start tapping this down the blade will want to go to the left a little bit so i have actually got to tap this um it does need to be looked at but it means i've got to take the paper off and you know take a little bit off the right side but it is working quite well um it's a little it's it's a little inconvenience not enough for us to take the paper out you know and sort it out um in time i probably will another thing that that i didn't know and i should have known and which is common sense now that i know it and i never checked for this which is again really stupid of myself but i don't know if you can see um on the camera but basic basically um the very bottom of the blade it actually tapers in um it's it's kind of like two little chamfers at either corner of of the blade and where these um chamfers are we'll call them chamfers for for, for the example there and there is a there is a, a correct japanese um name and i'm not going to try to pronounce it so these corners before i actually sort them out was like kind of over the where where the where the blade actually wedges in so what this does when you are when you're actually taking a shave and um because the blade's protruding out ever so slightly um you're taking a shave and and it's actually nipping um where where the where the notch the wedged notch is um again i, I can't remember the name um so so basically when you're taking a shave and the the shavings are are basically nipping um obviously which isn't good so so what i've done and what the guy suggested i do or what everybody <laughs> what everybody should do is basically these these two corners here just just remove them on the stone just just make those make those um make those corners um you know just 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 remove some of the corner basically um and once i've done that that was a really really big improvement so there was actually you know the there must have been some um, grabbing of um, the material so the blade itself um i sharpened this very very differently than i sharpened me me western cell um chisels and planes so i don't know if you'll be able to see on the on the video if you're watching this on youtube um so this this is the this is the this is the back of the or the front if you're looking down on it, the front this is the portion where the chip break i'll make contact um and you'll see you might be able to see a thin line that's going all the way around um the shiny line and that's basically where it's been polished and the bit that looks very dull is because it is dull and it hasn't been touched and is there is a bit of a, a hollow in it um, and this is just the nature of um, japanese blades and um, chisels are ch chisels are quite quite the same quite similar um so this obviously got flattened um and then polished so when i initially done this i think i initially done it with the water stones um and i did i did do the front with the water stones i don't get on with water stones um i prefer to use me me diamond um me diamond um, plates but i did actually take the time i did use the the water stones for this and I, i'll be honest i didn't get it i didn't get very good results with it um to the point that i basically abandoned them <laughs> and i got me and i got me uh me diamond plates out and i shot i sharpened this with the diamond plates so 
um i got really really good results with this um and i did actually learn a few things from this so i found out which i knew anyway but i wasn't aware of how how worn they were but my diamonds my diamond plates are basically um i've got um i've got extra coarse coarse um and fine is that right coarse extra coarse fine and extra fine so I've got, I've got the four plates so i found out that my extra fine is not extra fine anymore it's probably closer to extra extra fine which ironically i did actually go out and get a, an extra extra fine plate which is supposed to be eight um eight thousand grits um and the reason i've done that was to kind of do away with uh, the strop um, I, I find that a bit of a pain sometimes a strop but it is needed it's still needed um so so basically i sharpened this guy up on the on the diamond stones um and i went i went all the way through um extra coarse coarse um fine extra fine and then obviously i, I did take it extra extra fine which ironically isn't extra extra fine and needs to be broken in a little bit um so i kind of i learned i learned to kind of slip the extra extra fine in between the fine and the extra fine if that makes sense so it's kind of in the middle where it should be at the very end but it as i said it needs broken in and needs worn down a little bit so I found with this process um after that if i take it to the strop and i just give i give this guy like maybe five five strops um on the front and five on the back and that's all that's needed um and i i can pretty much see me face in this when i'm when i'm looking at the blade um and normally for what i've done for such a long time um as per paul seller's instructions uh, when you're using a strop strop the strop the blade anywhere from 30 to 40 times 50 times whatever um and i've done that religiously and i've always got good results with it um but the setup as it is as it's as it's worn down i really don't believe i need to do that anymore so what i have been doing with everything i'm sharpening i've just been giving it five on the front five on the back um, run it through the corner of a piece of wood um, to make sure there's no burr on it and it's it's just as sharp as it would be if i took it through um 30 or 40 times i think the only difference being um is that the the blade itself is more more polished which technically means that it's sharper but it doesn't feel it to me so i don't see the point in standing there and going 30 to 40 times when i don't need to um obviously i'm trialing this out at the moment so this might change i'm i'm not totally sure but as of now i am just five on the front five on the back so another thing to note when i am when i am sharpening this on the diamond stones i'm doing it exactly the same way as what i would do it on a um a japanese whetstone um so basically I would have it um, tilted to its bevel um, and just backwards and forwards so this differs from the way i've been doing it with my western sail um, blades or irons so basically i would have it 90 degrees to the center of my body which is a new way i've been doing it's been doing this for a good few months now um, and obviously cre just create um, um, a convex um rather than a concave that you would get from a from a grinding wheel something like that so you know as i see him again as per paul sellers um you know this is the way i started sharpening um i don't think i'll ever change it from your western sales stuff but um the japanese stuff doesn't do too well with it i have actually tried this in the past and it's uh, you know it's no good you're better off like kind of sticking to 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 a straight bevel type of thing so there is a secondary bevel that goes on these but the secondary bevel is only very very slight um you know the don't the japanese cross uh, person in the past and obviously today the ones that still uses um they don't put a great deal of a 
um, of a secondary bevel on it um, simply because it's it's just quick and it's easier for resharpening. I think the guy the guy that um, was um, who done the video who I'm referring to um, he basically says I aim to have the the plane sharpened and back on the workpiece within five minutes. Um, I personally can't do that with Japanese um, Japanese blades. I can do that, and I can probably do it a little bit quicker than five minutes with a with a Western style chisel or um, a Western style plane. Easy, quite easy. Um, obviously, plenty of experience with them, um, but I think it's going to take us a little bit of time. Um, you know, gathering experience and um, a bit, bit of a learning curve to actually get to the point where I am. Like, you know, got this, got this back in the plane, and back to work within five minutes. Um, but I do think I am going to start using this a bit more because once the setup, um, they are a pleasure to use. Um, even I was, I shouldn't have been using them, but I was. <laughs> when I was, I was putting the um, on on the on the roof. Uh, that I've done um, because I'm using PVC um, for the fascia there needs to be a backing because the PVC is only 9 millimeters, so you do have to have some sort of backing on it and because I had quite a lot of OBS left um, you know thin strips of it I thought why not use it and save us from going out and buying um, 19 millimeters. say uh, I think it is I can just use the 9 millimeter. you know I may, may as well uh, use that um, so there was a bit of a discrepancy when the two pieces met because obviously I've done I've done my roof but I've also done my neighbour's roof. You know they all like actually joined it as a semi-detached house. So you know uh, there was there was a break and where there was a break there was like a bit of a a bit of a step and honestly this was great. Um, you know just I'm I'm actually st <laughs> standing on my workbench my uh, sawhorse workbench was which worked out absolutely great for a for a makeshift scaffold. Um, so I'm standing on that and I'm just using this to uh, you know to to, to basically um, to, to flatten it out. You know so there's no step. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, Re really really a lifesaver i don't think i could have done it with um with a western sale me bait me bailey me bailey pattern um you know i really don't think that would have worked uh, but this this was absolutely excellent um i couldn't believe how well it worked to be honest so uh, once 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 the blade sorted out we then have the chip breaker so from what i understand with the chip breaker the chip breaker is quite a new thing um in japanese woodwork and i think it's only been present for maybe the last i want to say 100 years i might be wrong but i don't know i don't know it's pretty new um and from what i understand the the japanese crafts people of today will only use it when the when they're struggling with the grain, when the grains, you know, all over the place and they're getting tear out, um, you know, they will stick stick a chip breaker in. Um, so when you are when you are kind of um, sorting out the chip breaker, because it does need sorted out again. A lot of people don't don't realise it when they're new to Japanese um, planes. You do need to sort this out. Uh, so basically, at the very edge. Um, that needs to be flattened so it needs to be um, you need to make good contact with with the the blade itself um, and how you do with this is basically you set it on um, and you'll basically look you look down it because um, there is a gap um, you look down it um, and see if you can see any daylight in this one you can't um, so for those of you that are listening um a bit more of a description so the chip break itself is pretty much a square um and one side is actually um shaped much like a much like a blade basically and i could actually probably cut myself for this um the truth be known um and at the other side of the steel the two corners i'm talking maybe six millimeters or or kind of bent in and a bit of a triangle shape um, and it's the same again so the the chip breakers basically wedge in 
um, it's 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 such a simple design but very effective um, and this this particular one um, when I had it on you basically you when I when I had it set in place there was a there was like a, a wobble in it if you can imagine a chair when a chair hasn't when a chair when a chair's on uneven floor and the chair wobbles or when you're building a chair or or even a bench and you get that you get that little bit of wobble um same sort of thing was happening with this so traditionally i think as is what they'll do they'll actually put one of the corners um onto an anvil get a hammer and just hit it you know just um and check it bring it back to the blade until there's no wobble in it um i haven't got an anvil um so what i did um very cautiously may i add um i just used a file took a took a took a couple of swipes with a file put it back on checked it um i think it took about two attempts and then i had a good fit um to where it wasn't wobbling so that's that sorted out um so now there's the actual setting of the the plane itself um and this is again this is something i've struggled with so what the what the guy recommended was that you put the blade in in the uh, into the bed use the palm of your hand and just give it a little you know a little shove um to just just to where you can't get it anymore um and what he basically says is that there should be enough um there should be enough material you, you have or all that you haven't removed too much material or maybe you should have moved uh, removed a little bit more but basically what he says is when you've put it in with your palm as i've just demonstrated on the video there and you know give it a bit of a shove you know you're not you're not hanging off the thing but like a bit of a shove um and basically um you get your hammer and it should just be a few taps now i can ever so slightly feel that so so when when the japanese um when you see the japanese uh, when you see the japanese craftspeople people um, doing this they will actually look down the um, the sole of the plane um, to a degree I can do this to a degree but I'm as blind as a bat <laughs> I really am one thing I will say for western planes I was deadly against this because for me at least I can't see it very well but I find that with the contrast with the wood and the steel you can see it better or at least I can see it better um, so when i've been setting these i've been kind of going in between just feeling with my thumb and looking down and feeling with uh, feeling looking with my eyes so when it when it looks and feels like i've got it in a good position i'll actually get this um, on onto my workpiece and see how i'm doing and i do this with my western planes as well i'll go one side of the blade check that what you know what kind of a shaving i'm getting and then i'll go to the other side and see what um, type of a shaving i'm getting from that and then obviously just adjust it left to right with with the with the hammer um so when you if you've if you if you've advanced the blade too much what i used to do i used to hit it directly 90 degrees with the end grain on the back of the plane so you don't do this obviously i've just learned this um you should be hitting the corner the corner of the top and um, just behind the plane blade itself that's where you want to be hitting it you don't want to be hitting it on the end grain like i did <laughs> and and you let and you won't end up with a load of indentations like i've got um obviously the indentations are a good sign that the the blade in the past was too tight again my fault didn't know what i was doing um so you know you want to be hitting it on the corner and it will come out um sometimes when you're advanced too much on one on one side you can actually hit um the the corner of that side um and it will pull that corner out a little, like ever so 
so slightly. Sometimes it doesn't work, but again, that might just be me not having me not having me playing set up optimally um i'm pretty sure that's a japanese craftsperson who knows what they're doing and got these things set up optimally and um, will be able to do that you know they'll be able to make the this this blade move where they want it to move obviously experience has, has got a lot to do with this um which i'm lacking in um and it's the same again for if it's not advanced far enough or maybe one corner just feels right and you want the other corner you can actually hit the um the front of the the plane same again hit it on the top corner um, and you will advance the blade that way so i've kind of been moving in between everything just to kind of get it try to get a feel of it um and i will say you know after kind of messing around for a while i did I did see myself jump um, leaps and bounds just by watching that video. It may have been two videos or even three videos I watched, but the information that he that he gives us just silly little things that are easily overlooked, and obviously I've overlooked them. Um, but I am getting the hang of getting this set up, um, and it's going to be really good to the point where I'm going to be able to get it set up in maybe a couple of minutes, which is going to be awesome. If I can set this up in like a couple of minutes, it stands to reason that I'm going to be using it a lot more. Don't get us wrong, I'm always going to use me Bailey pattern, uh, me Bailey pattern planes because I absolutely love them. But sometimes, um, depending on what I'm doing, um, these guys just come in so handy. Um, obviously what i was talking about before using it upside down you know on the obs board it's not recommended to use them on the obs board obviously like it's a bit, little bit sacrilege isn't it that but i mean another good another good place i like to use these if i've got a piece of wood and i want to um and i want to play in the end grain you know i might just have it like sailing off you know the edge of the bench me me roman workbench or even me tall bench and these are just so good for you know kind of just coming down in a, in a vertical um, position so you can do it with a western style plane um but i personally feel these are a lot better um, for that sort of um sort of action but obviously that's that's just my opinion so i think I think that's pretty much it um you know in regards of what i've learned but what i will say these these few little simple things and honestly it's like took us from one up to about seven or at least it feels that way it was which is um absolutely great considering i've you know i have been struggling with these for a long time you know it's been hitty missy well i can get them to work decently but every time every time i've you know pick this up since watching the video um i just seem to be progressing and getting better at using them setting them up um where i've struggled in the past um obviously doing those few little tweaks to the plane um has made such a difference um so i am going to leave a I am going to leave a, a link in the description for anybody that is kind of interested in these um, kind of planes. I would highly suggest um, checking the guy out. Again, it's in Japanese, but if if he can like struggle through like I did with the Japanese and kind of watching what he's doing, um, it's it's so beneficial. Um, at least I think so. Um, and as I said, I am grateful for the guy. He, he's he's took the time to um put the the english uh, subtitles on so i think that's probably it for today so remember guys if you do want us to continue with these podcasts let us know because as i said it's i might just stop them all together but uh let us know um and for those of you that have watched today or listened um thank you very much i do appreciate it and until the next time i shall see and speak to you guys later